Raheem, would you like to start? I'll defer to the dean. <laughs> <laughs> I will defer to the vice president. <laughs> really? Sure. No, go. Okay, well, so my name is Charles Isbell. Um, I am not quite an Atlanta native. Uh, I arrived in Atlanta at three and a half years old. It is my earliest memory. Um, and I've been a, um, in uh, Atlanta almost all of that time. I'm a product of Atlanta public schools. Uh, I bounced around for multiple elementary schools before uh, finally going to high school at Benjamin Elijah Mays Academy of Math and Science. I'm Raheem Villa. I'm a professor in the School of Electrical and Computer Engineering, and I'm also Vice President for Interdisciplinary Research. Um, so I went to Douglas High School, so I went through the Collier Heights Elementary School, and actually back then there was really no middle school. So I would just went, it was you know, first graders in school with seventh graders, and then eighth graders in school with 12th graders. Um, so I went through Collier Heights, and then I went to, to Douglas. I was always very fascinated with video games. So what made me think about technology and programming was video games. So my grandmother bought me an Atari 2600. Um, I was super excited. I mean, that thing changed my life. Well, so first of all, let me just say how young you are, uh, that you had an Atari 2600. It was just called Atari when I had it. It didn't become a 2600 <laughs> until many, many years later. Um, I had many of the same experiences you did thinking about technology and wanting to build computers. For me, the first experience was uh, a Timex Sinclair ZX81 which I built from a kit um, at what used to be Bell Labs uh, up uh, in Norcross. You might remember it's, that's been many, many years since it was a Bell Labs, but that's actually where they invented um, optic fiber. And a nice little summer program there, uh, and we built computers. And the very first program I wrote was a program to fill up the screen with inverse spaces, uh, and it ran out of memory before it could, could finish doing it. And that's when I knew I want to be a computer scientist. Um, it's the first piece of malware. So the first piece of malware, that's exactly right. That's exactly, we all get there somehow, right? Uh, so I came to Georgia Tech, um, I got in. My mother dropped me off um, at what was, is still called FACET, uh, which is the orientation for freshmen. She drove up, dropped me off, she said, go to college. Uh, and then she went home. And uh, I wandered around for a little while. And the first day of classes, I realized I had to figure out how to get there. I walked across campus and it was a completely different experience from what I was expecting. I, I. I was the only person I saw who looked like me the entire time I walked across uh, from one end of the, the campus to the other. And uh, it was a bit of a shock. Uh, so growing up in Atlanta, uh, one can get the impression that um, you are not in the minority because everyone you saw on TV, Monica Kaufman, uh, people who you saw, the, the mayor, everyone you saw uh, looked like you. And I went to a high school uh, that had, I think, 1,580 students, all but four of whom uh, were black. And so I had this kind of image in my head. And when I got to Georgia Tech, it was nothing like that at all. And so that was a bit of a culture shock for me. I got through it. Um, after a couple of weeks, I got used to the new normal. Um, and I became a part of uh, the set of people who were, were at Georgia Tech. And I knew that I had found home. Uh, it was a really, I think, important transition period for me to sort of come to, to understand what uh, the world was like and that I had a place in it. And it was, it was really, it was really a, a great few years. So one thing that's, that's a nice parallel is that our, our, both our high schools were, were not diverse, um, as, as Charles has mentioned. So in addition to that, I went to an HBCU, which sort of continued that, that theme. Um, so when I got to Georgia Tech, uh, it was certainly, I was a, a couple years older uh, than, than Charles was when he arrived, but it was certainly that very similar shock. Um, it was one that uh, when I was at, at A&T, um, it was, again, it wasn't necessarily diverse, and I was also at the top of my class. It, you know, it was like, oh man, I'm working really hard at the top of my class. And then when I got here, it was a um, really diverse environment, and I actually had to change my approach to studying, and, and I had to really step my game up, and, and it, it worked out really well. I had a, a good experience um, here as a, as a student and a faculty member, and, and you know, if you think about it, you know, for me, it was you know, 20 years ago, um, I mean, certainly there were micro and, and macro aggressions, right? They, they existed. But what I appreciate about um, tech in particular, that there were people that, that looked like me, for example, like a Gary May, and people that didn't look like me, like a Bill Webber, that were actively fighting to counter these things, right? So that was my experience as a graduate student, and the same thing as a, as a faculty member, right? So is, um, you know, Gary May just sort of plowed right in front of me, and so he blazed his trail. Uh, so Gary May, um, who's an alum of Georgia Tech uh, and other places, um, was uh, the chair of the School of Electrical and Computer Engineering uh, and then became uh, the dean of the College of Engineering, first 
by Green the College of Engineering at uh, Georgia Tech, uh, and is now the chancellor, which is president um, equivalent of UC Davis, where he's been that for three years now? About three years. About three yeah. years now. Uh, it turns out, I didn't know this at the time, but it turns out that I've been following Gary May my whole life, uh, my whole career. Uh, um, and finally figured this out when I, I came back to Georgia Tech uh, many years later. Uh, I didn't, we didn't have a Gary May in the College of Computing. I'm not going to say I was the Gary, be very clear, I'm not the Gary May of uh, Are you the, Gary the May? College of Computing, but I was the first uh, black assistant professor, first black associate professor, first black full professor, first black associate dean, first black dean um, uh, at Georgia Tech in, in the college. Um, and so I've, I was trying to do those, do those sorts of things. But it would have been much more difficult if it weren't for the people who had, had come before, if it weren't for the, the Gary Mays in particular. Um, and, and for example, there are these people at Tech, whether they look like us or they don't look like us, who have been trying to do the right thing uh, in general for uh, notions of diversity, for bringing in different voices and, and different experiences. And it has made, I, I suspect, both of our journeys significantly easier than they would have been otherwise. What I, I tell students now is, look, you know, I, I really want you to choose Georgia Tech. I want you to apply to, to us and, and our peers. Go visit, come visit us, and actually say, you know what, I'm going to choose between these different options. And I, if you look at quality and diversity, the intersection of those two, if that's really important to you, then there's just no competition. Right? So I, I love when students go out and encourage them to go and look at other places. At the end of the day, it's not about leadership for the sake of a title. It's to make a difference, right? And it's to have an impact. And these are ways in which you can have an impact. So the reason to come back to Georgia Tech, in my view, at the time, and I think history is, has only um, uh, proven this to be true, is that it's uniquely situated both in terms of geography and history, but also in terms of the risks that the university is willing to take to have the kind of impact that I want to have. It's about access and it's about scale. Nobody does scale the way Georgia Tech does. Nobody takes these programs and thinks, well, it's not just going to touch 20. Nobody takes um, new degrees and say, well, it's not just going to touch 50. We try to do 100, we try to do 1,000, we try to do 10,000, so we try to make a big change. If you look at the statistics around Georgia Tech, it's we are the largest this, the largest school of electrical computer engineering in the country by a lot. Uh, we produce the most engineers. We produce um, among the most computationalists. By the way, we produce the most undergrads underrepresented groups, undergrads, who go on to get PhDs somewhere else. It's about big in, it's about scale. And you could see that, I could see that even as an undergrad. I certainly saw it once I left and looked at how the rest of the world, very impactful places in the world make a difference. You look back at Tech, you look back at Atlanta, you look back at Georgia, you look back at this part of the world, and you see it's big, right? And that's why you wanna come back to a place like this, and it's certainly a large part of why I do. Uh, that's one of my main reasons that I, I decided to go into leadership. I had great mentors that I think helped prepare me for this. Um, and so it's really about impact at, at, in the academy, impact at the institute, but also societal impact. And you, the, the way to do that is by building your voice in one way is through this leadership path that we've chosen. So diversity is important, period. And you should think about it that way. It's a, um, a moral and ethical argument as much as it is a financial argument. It just makes business sense. Um, if you look at the, the changing demographics of, of the country, um, it makes business sense and it's something that we, we have to do and have to embrace. And I think that this is uh, something that people try to avoid, but I think it's important not to avoid it, but to face it head on. The literature not only tells us that people produce better products when there's a group of diverse voices, it also tells us that they're less happy. And the reason they're less happy is because everyone in the room is not coming from the same place. You get more conflict this way. You get more voices telling you this doesn't make any sense or more voices uh, fighting over what it is that makes sense for them. Because they have different incentives, they have different experiences. And that in of itself, while uncomfortable, is uh, an important part of the growth process, important part of the development process, as important as you as an individual to go. So diversity in technology is both important because it produces something better it's Im and it's important because it's the right thing to do, and those two things together make everyone individually better. So you actually benefit from, um, I won't even, don't even want to call it conflict, uh, but from the experience of having to understand your ideas um, and to argue for them and to take into account uh, the views of others who haven't had exactly the same experiences that you have. Because otherwise, how else are you, how else are you going to do it?